Hi there, this is Praveen. Samsung announced the launch of its new Galaxy A5 2017. The new mid-range Galaxy A series model will be replacing the 2016 edition of Galaxy A series. Samsung once again trying to promote the metal and glass design which made last year's model popular. At first glance, the new Samsung Galaxy A5 look very similar to the flagship Galaxy S7, especially because of their rounded corners. Only the screen sizes are noticeably different. Before we go ahead with the in-depth review, first let's see what's inside the hood. This phone features a 5.2 inch display with a full HD and use Super AMOLED display with 424 ppi. Sadly, the A5 is shipping with Android Marshmallow which is disappointing although Samsung says a Nougat update is coming soon. This phone is powered by the Samsung's in-house Octa-Core Exynos 7870, clocked at 1.9 GHz coupled with 3 GP of RAM, also has 32 GP of internal storage. Samsung is offering 15 GB of cloud storage through its own Samsung Cloud app which is very impressive. Samsung is also heavily promoting the fact that the new Galaxy A5 has dedicated slot for two nano sim cards and a micro sd card and it supports 4g with vivo lte the phone's graphic performance is somewhat less impressive we will see that later both the front and back of the a5 2017 feature 16 megapixel camera and impressively wide 1.9 aperture and this one has a decent fingerprint scanner which I use pretty much exclusively with zero issues. And also it has all the necessary sensors which can be found in the flagship Galaxy S7. And also this phone features Samsung Pay, NFC and S-Beam which can be used to transfer the file over to another Galaxy devices. And this phone is IP68 certified so this is dust and water resistant. The Full HD Super AMOLED display with the 424 ppi is not sharp enough to use the A5 with the Gear VR headset according to Samsung and thus it isn't supported but there is nothing stopping you from using Google Cardboard instead. Although I'll notice one thing you'll need to share the screen to read it in a really bright conditions but for the most part it is adequate for outdoor viewing. Here are the few photos I have taken using Samsung Galaxy A5. This camera have an excess of megapixel that looks great on the bullet point description but the rear camera in particular lacks the tech needed to make this a rival for the best including the Samsung S7 or even the Galaxy S6. This camera is good but not truly really great. The only areas in which it trips up is the usual low light. This phone does not have optical image stabilization and the high megapixel count comes at the expense of the size of the pixel themselves. As a result, photos in the poor indoor lighting and at night start to break down a bit as the noise reduction algorithm go to work on images. Achieving up both noise and fine details, I also found it quite easy to take blurry shots if you are not careful about keeping your hands still. There may be a little pause before the shutter fires as the camera fine tunes its focus, but no obvious shutter lag or any head banging delays as the phone processes a photo before letting you to take another one. This is what a camera phone should feel like. If you like getting creative with your phone camera, there are better choices though. The dynamic range of the sensor just isn't the great, and there is no clever auto HDR mode now very common in the smartphone. What you should take from this is that the camera is on that level of Galaxy S7, the iPhone or the LG G5. However, it can still take good pictures and crucially is good fun to use. Fun matters, isn't it? Okay, let's talk about GPU and gaming on Galaxy A5 2017. In GFX Bench on-screen test, it gained an average frame rate of 14 frames per second, which is 33 frames per second fewer than the OnePlus 3T scored. Sure, it was not so bad on the practicality. I found Real Racing 3 ran with minimal hiccups even when there were lots going on on screen, but you need to bear in mind how the phone will perform not just with the games of today but also those released two years from now if you plan to use this phone for such a long time. 
So, which one should you buy? OnePlus 3T or Samsung Galaxy A5? Let's see, Samsung Galaxy A5 impresses with its stylish looks, steady performance, good looking screen and hardware level security that is rare in the Android ecosystem. If you're looking for a phone with a bigger screen, you might want to consider the OnePlus 3T as it offers a bigger 5.5 inch Full HD display is driven by even more powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 chip with 6GB of RAM and runs the latest 7.1 version of Android Nougat. OnePlus offers more screen space but Samsung packs in more pixel per inch and Samsung displays are among the best in the industry. So which one you should go for will come down to this. Do you want the slightly bigger screen or the slightly better screen? Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave your comments below. Have a good one.